Jeff Little here, pro staffer for Do It Molds, and I'm going to show you how to do a modification to a brand new mold. The reason for the modification for this, um, I'll explain. I was in on the uh, Tidal Potomac yesterday doing exceptionally well with this rig right here. This is a Confidence Bates large bird, and the color is Mama Chog. And I got it rigged on a Confidence Bates dragon head. Nice little eighth ounce uh, fine wire hook, very sticky little setup. Uh, we were catching plenty of uh, three pound on average bass, uh, targeting wood, but also targeting bare spots in the milfoil. We'd stand up in our kayaks and, and just spot those bare spots and put that large bird and dragon head right on them, and it was pretty much automatic. Now, it's early June now, and, and you know you can see those open spots. Uh, but it, that milfoil is going to grow up and I need something that is going to be a little bit heavier than that and really that is, is going to be better designed at punching down in through uh, those openings. That's why I got this molder here. This is the, the brush jig and I'm going to do a little bit of modification to it. Uh, this one's designed to have this thing right here, the, uh, the bristle weed guard and uh, I'm just not real crazy about these um, I'd much rather have a piece of plastic be the thing that makes it weedless so I'm gonna modify it to be more of a shaky head type deal um, this particular mold I'll show it to you with the pins in it is designed so that the the lead kinda wraps around the eyelet so it's it's especially suited for punching down in vegetation and coming back up clean. So what I'm going to do is where these pins are for the, the wire weed guard, I'm going to um, do a little bit of modification to the mold itself. I'm going to do some dremeling. I'll show you that here in a moment and make it so that I can push a um, this thing right here. These are screw locks and what we're going to do is take the the insert for this and just shove it right in this medium screw lock. We're going to situate that in such a way that you have the the little turn part of it into the lead which grabs it and instead of the bristle you're just going to have that little screw sticking out. Now I need to modify this part right here with the Dremel. This mold is designed to close very nicely with very little tolerance with the bare pin in there. Once we add the threads of this uh, the corkscrew the screw lock it will not close. So we need to modify this section right in here just enough that it you know will allow these these extra threads of the the screw lock shoved on there. We got a be extra careful in this region right here not to take any more than we need to. In fact, I'm mostly going to be uh, dremeling from there back to allow these uh, these threads to sit in there. In this area right here, I just want enough to let that edge right there probably sit on this, uh, this back side because I don't want any extra lead pouring up in there. So. We'll go ahead and get to work. Got them dremeled out. Just gonna test the uh, test these for a fit. See if that closes. Yep. Nice, tight fit. One real important intermediate step is to smoke your molds when they're new, or when they're newly modified. As soon as you you know expose bare uh, <clears throat> bare aluminum you really want to heat it up and that just gets the wax I've already done this one actually um, makes it so the wax will really or the lead will really pour in to these tight little spots like around the uh, the eyelet there that's a tight little area and uh, Without doing this, yeah, you can add some flux to the lead itself, but it really helps to, you know, take the wax from the uh, the candle and really smoke it up. 
get it good and black and sooty. That way it'll pour in those really tight, tight spots. Got them all ready for the first shot. Let's see how we did. All complete pours. Two of them stuck to that side, one to this side. It's almost the finished product. Got to get a little bit of powder paint on there. Got a bunch of them powder painted up and uh, trying a couple different uh, options in terms of the rigging. Uh, did some white ones, some green ones, black ones. You can see they they stand up. It's a real nice, real nice design. It stands up like that. Um, the initial idea that I had was for this large bird in Mumichog. So that one I rigged on a green head. Here's another one. Nice big uh, creature bait. Nice big profile. Use that half ounce head for that one. Uh, your more traditional um, jig and pig combo. This is actually a, a pack of craw and uh, I just threw a skirt on there. These are the, the do it living image skirting and they actually have little places that you can put your put the little rattle chambers on there. I got a couple there. Uh, here's a skirt trailer without a rattle and uh, this one's gonna be interesting. I think this one may may surprise me. Uh, I did the white one with a punch skirt and a little uh, a small swim bait. I think that one punching in and out of that mill foil is gonna do a really nice job for me. This modification can be done to any weedless jig mold. The second one I did was on a poison tail jig mold worked great for the finesse worm, but it also provided a really nice platform for larger baits, like swim baits or larger jig and pig profiles. To get started making jigs the way you like them, download a catalog from doitmolds.com. Do it molds when pride is on the line.